Paul in Ephesus. Now, Paul had been to Ephesus, but then he came back to Ephesus and stayed there for three months telling the people about the kingdom of God, preaching in the synagogue. That's where the Jews gather together. And God worked special miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs were brought from his body to the sick and the people got cured. But then some bad Jews started to go round calling the name of Jesus over people who were sick, saying things like, We command you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of a man called Sceva who did this. And one of the people they tried to cure, who was mentally ill, he leaped on them and jumped on them so that they ran away naked and wounded. And all the Jews and Gentiles in Ephesus heard about this, and they all came to respect the name of the Lord Jesus. Many people who had believed in Jesus came and admitted the bad things they've done, and that's called repentance, and they, who had used magic, brought their books and all their magic things together and burnt them in front of everybody. When they counted the price of them, it came to 50,000 pieces of silver. This was how mighty the word of God grew. So what it shows is that the word of God is very, very powerful. And that it can really change people's lives. It can mean that people who are practicing magic and have got expensive things they use to do magic could come and burn them. Because they realized that this was not from God. And around this time, there was a man called Demetrius who made silver icons. That's little miniature silver idols for Diana. And he called together all the workers and said, you know that this is how we've got our money, by making these little silver idols of Diana. And now Paul is persuading people that these are not gods. These are not idols which can be made with hands. And so Diana is going to lose her glory and we're in danger of losing our business. And so when they heard this, they all got really angry and went shouting out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians! And they made a riot in the city. It's Diana and not a girl or boy. Diana is a, a woman, a girl. And they believed that Diana was this god who lived in heaven, this, and so they made idols to her. Out of the sky or something. That's right, and that she'd uh, fallen, this uh, image had fallen down to the earth. So, they caught two of Paul's friends, and they dragged them into the theatre. Now, in those days, they had a big open-air place that they called the theatre, and everyone gathered together there. And when the town clerk, just like the, the local person who was governing the town, had gathered them together. He said, you men of Ephesus, everybody knows that the city of the Ephesians worships the great goddess Diana and the image which fell down from Jupiter. Seeing then that no one can deny that, why are you making all this fuss? If you've got a problem with anybody then you should take them to law but we're in danger of getting into trouble by having this riot that's the person she doesn't do nothing just just walks on the stage who doesn't do nothing amazing that's right we know that all these idols are, are nonsense are silly and they don't really exist well after the riot had ceased, Paul called the disciples and put his arms around them, cuddled them, embraced them, and left to go to Macedonia. And from there he went into Greece for three months. And when his enemies knew that he was there and made problems for him in Greece, he went back to Macedonia and thence to Syria, and then he came to Troas. And just the day before he was leaving Troas, when the disciples in Troas came together to break bread, Paul preached to them and they continued talking until midnight. So you can see that, like us, they did the breaking of bread once a week. And 
because it's not every day that you get Paul visiting you. They were talking, and Paul was teaching them from the Bible, right up into the middle of the night. And there were many lights in the upper room where they were gathered together. Now, in those days, they didn't have electricity. So they had oil lamps. And one of the problems with oil lamps is that it, it burns up all the oxygen and you can get sleepy. And they also didn't have glass in their windows. And there was a young man sitting in the window. But you see, it's quite warm there. There was no glass in the window. And he was sitting in the window while Paul was preaching. But the windows were pretty big. Couldn't oxygen easily float in? Yes, I'm sure it did. But inside... The oil lamp sort of made it all warm, and, and it would have been rather sleepy in there. So, sitting in the window was this young man called Eutychus, and he'd fallen asleep. He, he must have thought it was warm in the window, but, but and maybe you like getting cold or something. Well, the thing is, I'm sure he didn't mean to fall asleep, but he did. And he fell out of the window, and the window was on the third floor, so it's a pretty long fall. Well, I've Paul immediately ran down and threw himself upon Eutychus, put his arms around him and said to the others, Don't worry, he's still alive. So then Paul really resurrected that young man, and when Paul came up again, he broke bread and ate and talked a long while until the break of day, until the sun came up, but didn't sleep at all. And then he left, and they brought the young man home alive and were very comforted. So, that young man could have been you. Could have been one of you. That he wanted to hear the words of Paul, and that Paul was preaching all night. Now, we're so lucky that we can open the Bible and read it, and there you've got the words written down that people like Paul preached, but... In those days, they didn't have that sort of thing. And so they depended not on listening to computers and, and listening to recordings, but actually meeting people like Paul live and listening to him. And so this young man really wanted to, but he was just human and he fell asleep. Which is why books were there, like the internet books. Yeah, that's right. Bowls. But even... Most of those people probably couldn't even read, even if they could get to the scrolls. And so, the other lesson that, that we learn from that is that if we are really, really believing in Jesus, as soon as you meet others who really believe in Jesus, straight away, you've got so much in common. And they talked with each other until the sun came up, because they knew Paul was leaving the next day. That's how intense and close our friendships can be in Jesus. And it's quite different, quite different to anything that one can find in the world, in friendships in the world, that we have got the great hope of everlasting life and we know that Jesus really died for us. And this is what can keep you talking with each other until the sun comes up in the morning.